Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. Oops. Good morning, or there is nobody here yet but me. <laughs> um, okay, hold on. Um, I got my setup <clears throat> checked out. I'm checking out my setup for, <clears throat> excuse me, live recording. <clears throat> there is still a jumping frog in my throat, I'm afraid, in the morning, but so I'm um, about to, to um, do a little um, painting of this watercolor sketch um, or watercolor painting of this sketch I made. And um, I thought I was going to do it live this time. Um, it saves a lot of editing. And also um, I kind of like, um, you know, to, um, to start the day with other people. You know, working in your studio alone is really great most of the time, <laughs> but it can also be great to be with other people. So I've got my phone is filming now. Um, I see there are four people here or three. Probably it's probably four minus one. Could you please let me know if you can hear me well? Could you just say something in the chat for me? Oh, two people left. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So, <clears throat> Mikey, I can hear you just fine, and hi, hi there, I don't think I've been here before. No, I don't recognize your name, Mikey. Hello and welcome. This is the first time I'm going live in the morning. I'm in the Netherlands, and um, so over here, this is the start of my workday in the studio, and... Um, well, I figured I would just, you know, try, um, try, see if I like to do something live in the morning. Um, so what am I going to do? Um, yesterday I painted this angle shades, which is a butterfly, a moth. And, um, I normally don't do very realistic things. I, um, paint a lot of fantasy things well not really fancy but like creatures and faces and treescapes trees um but i also want to um train painting and drawing um nature creatures so um yeah mikey if you're in the us it's probably um depending on where you live in the us it's probably very very early in the morning or very late at night <laughs> yeah well I sometimes do live video I sometimes do live videos um in in the evenings as well so that would be better for you time wise um but I'm just starting out um with uh you know live in the morning just checking out what works for me because um in the evening I'm often very tired and I start the live um, video with a lot of energy and then I um, end up getting you know being super super tired so I just wanted to see if this works out so hello Paolo or pa Paolo Paolo so we're with few now <laughs> but that's okay that's okay so 
I'm just gonna, you know, talk, try to say out loud the things I do. Are you guys experienced painters? Do you have any experience with watercolor or just, or were you just checking out to see um, what um, channels were going live? It's what I did yesterday for the first time. I started looking up live um, channels. And I found a really nice one, um, a, a phrase something of a guy who filmed um, walking around New York City. Um, and he, he's got, he's got a live stream of those recordings. So I've never been to New York, never been to the US. So, uh, yeah, no. So I'm giving it, um, the entire page a little wash with water because these are graphite, um, sketches. And if you um, do that very carefully, then the graphite will sink into the paper a bit and you won't, um, you won't smudge it too much. Hi, Wendy. Hi from, hello, Wendy. I'm in the Netherlands. Welcome here. So you guys, I really didn't expect anybody from across the Atlantic. So, and I think, Paolo, where are you from? Are you from, um, Across the Atlantic as well. I'm in Europe, in the Netherlands. Mikey loves watercolors and all the theory that goes into pigments. Oh, yes, so do I. I'm absolutely pigment crazy. By the way, this might not mean anything to you if you haven't seen my channel, my videos yet. But um, this is a scoop of my um, newly adapted ideal palette that I composed of all the watercolors that I have. And I have quite a few because I've been um, reviewing watercolors for a couple of years now. And I've, um, I've um, collected quite a, a few things. And viewers sent me complete collections of paint from certain brands. So um, there was a lot to choose from. Um, you have arthritic hands, so you're not good with painting. Oh, that's, oh that must be frustrating, Mikey. Um, I was going to say there are there are watercolor styles you could try when you have trouble for with precision work. Watercolor is also a great medium if you work on bigger sheets of paper, especially for more intuitive and abstract things, landscapes, for instance, that um, that can be amazingly beautiful. So if, if you, you can't work for a long time or if you have trouble working precision, um, it can still be a really great medium. So if you would, um, it could be a thing. You're in Portugal. Ah, Paulo. Do I say your name right then? Paulo or <laughs> Wendy. Good tip on the graphite. It's late here, so you might not be around for long. No, I get that, Wendy. <laughs> I just watched a live video from a guy walking around New York and it said live walk around New York and then it was like brought daylight in the video and I was like no that can't be live the guy's gotta be asleep right now it's ridiculous how your heart started beating faster when you just showed your palette <laughs> yeah okay well I do get that Mikey it, it's it's a very rare medical condition to have heart races over um, watercolor palettes but yeah I'm a patient as well. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. You know, with with all the pigments I have, most of the time people compose a palette, you know, um, from not having a lot of paints and then trying to find out what, what pigments they should buy. But I had the opposite. It was like I have sort of like a store. Um, um, my stock basically is is a lot. Um, so I had to try and, and bring it down. So it's why I have a 52, uh, 52 color um, palette as my ideal palette, which of course is not really an ideal palette because you would like to mix and everything. Um, but it took me um, over a full full time week, over a full time week to compose this set. And um, you can see some videos of that. And I even, um, I swatched my first ideal set um, live so there is a long video I think it lasts about two or three hours um, here on my channel 
Um, but the thing is, the next morning I woke up and I saw the palette and I realized it was not going to be, <laughs> that was not the palette I wanted to have. So I changed it again. So then I put in another extra few days to work on that. So yeah, I know about being pigment crazy. It's, it's, it's unhealthy, I'm telling you. Right, so I'll also tell you a little bit about the pigments that I use. You have, you've been here before, have you, Paolo? <laughs> Good. Then welcome back. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. What I did yesterday, um, so I painted this one. I drew it in graphite and then I painted it and I um, made some, I took some notes. And here, um, you know, these butterflies, when they're fresh, they actually speak of butterflies as they do of flowers, like a fresh butterfly, um, is light olive green and um, a pinkish kind of brown. But after a while, the longer they live, um, the more their colors pale. Isn't that an interesting thing that, you know, a natural thing, an organism that's born with certain colors fades? I mean, he didn't really get, you know, um, um, the big prize in pigments, I think, I suppose, because his pigments fade away. So this butterfly is actually not like fast, which is kind of funny. Um, but I photographed this one and this one is very, very light because a couple of weeks back, I found another butterfly of this type in my backyard. And that was darker, much darker. So I've actually seen, you know, both color variations now. So I found that very interesting. So whatever I do in, so I painted, this is the realistic um, sketch that I did. Um, and then it was my intention to um, move on to more of, of a fantasy figure based on this creature, um, based on this butterfly. So I also drew some other perspectives of the other photos that I took. And these are micro photos by somebody uh, macro photos by somebody else on uh, Instagram, I believe, maybe. No, it was Google Images. Um, so um, I drew these two to get some sort of an idea of, you know, what this animal looks like in profile. And then I, I tried to make a fantasy creature, but it ended up <laughs> being, um, well, half realistic in a way still. And so this is a more realistic um, image of... Um, of um, the side view of this one, although I messed up the size of the head, but anyway. And then I got a little bit bored, or bored. No, I don't know if that's the right word. I got bored with the butterfly, but, and then I decided to sort of mirror these lines and to see what came out. And what came out was, my husband said, John Lennon. <laughs> so yeah, um, what I'm gonna do now is I wanna paint this one and I want to apply the colors as I've applied them um, to this one, so sort of a faded um, angle shades, roughly, and I might do these as well. So I apply some water to this. This, by the way, is a moleskin watercolor sketchbook. The paper is really thin compared to the other paper I normally use, which is always 140, no, what is it, uh, 300 grams is 140 pounds paper, I think. Um, but yeah. So the moleskin I use now for, for this, for these sketches. So gotta <laughs> move things around a bit so you can you guys can see what I do. So um, I wanna make a really pale uh, pinkish color because you know, the brown and the pink have faded a bit in this creature. So um, I choose PV19 and I'm gonna, tone that down dramatically with um, Titan Buff by Daniel Smith. And the PV19 is by Rembrandt, Talon's Rembrandt, which is um, one of my favorite brands, along with Daniel Smith, by the way. I also love that one. So I have no photo for reference for this one because it's sort of like almost an imaginary creature. So I wanna make the first layers really, really pale. Um, and, yeah. 
I didn't remember <laughs> um, how much of this animal was actually the pale pink, but it's almost all of the animal except for the... I bet it's very hard to see on camera because this is such a light layer of paint. And that's basically the secret to watercolor painting for anyone who likes to start layering, layering, layering. I don't know what brush I'm painting with, by the way. Um, it's a travel brush, but it doesn't have a name on it. But it's a really, really great brush. And I'm a bit gutted that I don't know produce if you hear really strange noises in the background it's my dog drinking so and he doesn't care whether I'm live or not <laughs> he will make dirty noises anytime okay I want to just flip back and see, okay, yeah, I'm adding just a little bit more <clears throat> of the PV-19 to, um, add just a little bit more color and yet not too much. Um, then I'm going to go for Daniel Smith Monte Amiata. Um, that's an ochre, an ochre I like very much because it's, um, it's rather bright in yellow. Just, oops. And I'm going to give this a light wash as well. Oh, hold on. Ah, made a mistake. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Yes, Paolo. I think it is a Nascota travel brush. I think so. But the thing, there is nothing on it. But I think you're right. I, I, that's my thought exactly. But I couldn't. Um, well, there is no name on that. <laughs> But I think so too. You know, these days I always write down the things that I buy. But at the time I bought this, I didn't. <laughs> and I didn't order this one online, so I can't, um, can't look back and see what it was. Okay, you got to give me a few seconds here because I hear an alarm is going and I want to see what's happening. Hold on, I'll be right back. Yep, I'm back. So... 
Um, another brush I really like to work with because this one is very, um, I think this is natural hair. It's very, it contains a lot of water and it's very soft and, and tender with the paper and the paint. And then I also like to work with Leonard. Um, this is the 20 R round, 20 round Ruby. Um, these are super cheap, but they are really good at precision work. And that's what I, um, my style is usually um, involves a lot of precision painting. So, um, oh, Hold on, I forgot something. <laughs> I just realized, I'm not really, um, I have to get used to, to live painting, <laughs> to, to talking to you guys and um, looking out for what I do at the same time. Yeah. rather pink this one too turn that rather pink so let's just suck up anything I can still get okay Here in the ceramic, yeah, it is. It's a mixture of PB19 and Titan Buff. So it's like this, this 50s kind of pink that we had in the 50s that they made a lot of ceramics with and it's beautiful indeed. Oh, Wendy, that's nice to hear. You're welcome. <laughs> Oh, and I would, you would like to come to the Netherlands and I would like to, 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 um, hop the Atlantic someday and visit Canada and some places in the United States. That would be really, really great. <laughs> okay. I made this one too pink for my liking, but you know, I can go back in later and add some white here and there to highlight. A thing or two so color wise this is a bit of a I won't say boring butterfly but yeah okay so um, another color combination I used a lot yesterday was um, azo green yellowish um, which is a ram brand that's PY 129 and um, you know there is a color I really dislike it's a, I find it a very ugly color. It's this one. It's chromium oxide green, PG-17. I think it's ghastly. Then someone said to me, Mandy, have you tried it in mixes already to tone down your greens? So this is toning down this color. And then I realized how important it can be to have this green to make any color of green more natural. Um, because when you look outside, um, I sit, I'm sitting right in front of the window of my studio. So I look into a garden, a backyard. Um, we have a lot, a lot of green in the garden. And, um, so this color is nowhere to be seen. Um, this color, mm, I don't think so either, but you know, going more towards this color, now we're getting closer to something that looks more real, more alive, therefore. Even though this is more vibrant, this one looks more, I don't know, more alive when I use it. So somebody said to me, keep in the chromium oxide green, you will you will learn to love it. And she was right. I'm learning to love it. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix um, an olive green from chromium oxide green, um, the PY129, because I want the vibrancy in there as well. And because I want the vibrancy in there as well, I'm also using um, quinacridone orange. Um, 
So that sort of um, balances out the dullness of the chromium oxide green. Or that's what I set out to do. It's what I want, want it to happen. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is okay. So I want to start very lightly. If you listen carefully, I think you can hear the birds in my garden. Um, right now there are about 40 to 50 doves sitting right in front of my studio window. They are reminding me very much that um, I absolutely failed them in feeding them in time, which is correct. I forgot because I was going live. And they're looking me reproachfully, hungry. They're making, you know, these... Um, They're acting that they're dying. <laughs> I tell you, doves can be quite dramatic when it comes to it. No, but it's true. These these doves are are nuts. They they are. I think they're coming too close to humans. Closer than is good for them. Um, using a little bit PBR7. <laughs> yeah, Mikey, I tell you, if you, if you ever want to paint something green, that's a little bit of natural. Hey, Ellie, good morning. <laughs> Ellie is a friend of mine and she's really close to me. Well, compared to the rest of you guys, that is. <laughs> Yeah, but chromium oxide green is absolutely something to um, to check out and to try again. It's it's not it's not a very bright, a festive color. It isn't. It's not going to make your day. And then when you mix it for more natural things, and and also by the way, in skin tones, I've tried it in um, the skin tone of an older person, and um, I really like how that. Um, help you know when somebody's really really old you know say almost at the end of their lives their skin sort of tells and um i found that by adding chromium oxide green i could attain that sort of like dying color oh they sound so dramatic but yeah this is what it is so <laughs> oh by the way ellie um, is a, a singer songwriter and she, i really really love her music she's got a couple of um English songs too on our channel. So if you want to hear some good music, then um, you should check her out. <clears throat> the only thing I don't like about very soft nat natural hair brushes is that sometimes they're so soft that when you try to draw um, a very precise line, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't get to be too precise. Um, I'm going to mix in a little bit of PV62 um, in the pink um, because I feel the pink is a little too warm. It's a little bit much on the warm side compared to the color I saw in reality. So I'll show you my ceramic palette here. Maybe I can put it up like that. Can you see? Oh, <laughs> um, I think I need to cool down the color just a bit here and there. Um, Just need to check again how these colors were. Okay, yeah. Okay, 
So this is not, you know, the real butterfly. It's my imagination running wild a little bit with the creature. And this is, um, you know, preliminary step to making, um, to turning it into um, a fantasy creature. I'll check if I have one of those here. I don't think I do. No. It's in one of my other books. I have, like, fantasy um, drawings like these. And um, it's what I sometimes use inspiration for from, you know, the natural world. <laughs> yeah, well, Ellie, you really deserve it. You really do. Your music deserves to be heard. It's really, really great. Yeah, looks like a very proud animal, doesn't it, Mikey? I don't really know the the names of the the body parts. Um, I do recognize breastplate, of course, and thorax, but. Um, These creatures, when you when you look at macro photos of them, they look so regal, so regal. No, yeah, regal, and also a bit like soldiers at some, you know, and also very much like owls. These um, these animals belong to the night owl family, and well, it's not hard to say why, right? I mean, they've got really really beautiful, um, fiery owl's eyes. So for that color, I want to just um, mixing a little bit PY150, nickel azo yellow with the quinacridone orange. Because <clears throat> I want to make those stand out. And I don't remember what color <laughs> their eyes were. Um, owls have got really orange eyes, right? So let's just do it, you know, the owl color. Um, hold on, wrong color. I just turned around my um, my ceramic plate, so I was in the wrong color. Oops, a little bit much. I'm still trying to get used to the difference between the amount of water that the brushes retain. Um, since I normally, I usually paint with this one, especially when I do fantasy paintings like these, I always use the harder um, brushes. Um, Cause they offer me more control. Here's where I wanted to go. <laughs> I knew I was going to work on the left, but I would. <laughs> oh. Hello, hello from Thailand. Wow, <laughs> now we've got the world covered. I'd never expected, we're with seven, but you know, guys, I've never expected that. I've done, I did um, a live video um, 
from when it was evening for me and then you know there would be um i don't know sometimes 30 40 people in at the same time just you know not not always because i'm i don't do it that regularly so um but then i thought you know what i'm just gonna do a live recording <clears throat> and i'll see if anyone shows up um i hadn't i hadn't expected it so I'm I'm very surprised that you guys are all here because <laughs> I thought the entire world was either about to go to bed or fast asleep or just waking up in the morning. <clears throat> so I'd expected only European um, people here, to be honest. So it's nice to see that the whole world is represented. Isn't that funny? That you can say you start you start your work day with people from all over the world. <laughs> oh, I kind of like the idea. I gotta say, oh, it really beats working in your studio alone all day every day. I'm really good at being alone in my studio. Too good for my own good, I think. But um, sometimes it's just fun to to hang out. And I saw um, another painter do this, um, Mitzi B. Michelle Kroll. And um, I've known her through um, an online course that we uh, were guest teachers for at some point. And um, when I learned that she was doing that, I checked her out. She does it every morning or she tries to do it every morning if she can. And um, then I thought, well, it might be something that I like as well. Yeah, you got some of you guys know each other. That's funny. So I feel like I'm the guest here. <laughs> Well, I don't, I'm not sure. Am I correct in saying that there is this, um, like, audience for live videos that um, sort of hop? That was a big boom. Sorry, it was probably my dog. Um, that hop um, live videos. Because I've, I've seen it before that people meet. It's like, sometimes it's like people go to a cafe, but rather than go to a cafe, they meet up at live video, at live um videos on YouTube. Is that correct? So I'm going to go back in with some pink. I'm not being too precise about it here. The doves are getting very impatient now. They are right in front, right outside of my window. There is a, a table with a couple of garden chairs. And on those garden chairs, there are a couple of doves now looking in and starting to make noises. They really want me to come out and give them food. <laughs> oh, these guys are bad. We started feeding birds all year round and um, we had no idea um, how expensive that was going to be. But the thing is, if you let them train you like a slave, it gets very expensive. You honestly don't know, you click all notification stuff, so they're on, but YouTube never tells me. Instead, I open YouTube and see, oh, okay. We know each other from a very specific channel here on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> and Discord, yeah. Discord, is that a thing? Is I, I, <clears throat> I see more and more people going to Discord for a live video. Is it better than YouTube? Yeah, the doves need their breakfast. And they're, they're 
there are more and more of them every so many minutes. There is more coming. But the, we never understood that when you start feeding the doves all year round, they were going to, um, you know, come in masses. And they are. So you start out with two doves. We had two doves in the garden. Then we started feeding. We had four doves. Then a couple of weeks later, we had 10, 15 doves. Then we went to 30 doves. Now we're 40, 50 doves. So it's just a never ending, you know, thing. And um, I find it kind of difficult to um, to lay down a limit and say, okay, so, you know, I'm going to feed this much and then I stop. Um, but right now we're feeding about 20 kilograms of dove food every month. And... Um, and then we're also feeding other birds, and that's another seven, eight kilos a month. And then we're also, um, I actually also feed crows. So I buy worms for them. <laughs> when you do something, you gotta do it right, right? Um, but it's just, it's getting really, really expensive. Yeah, it definitely is a house a house um, party for the doves. <laughs> is Discord a text chat platform? Oh. I didn't know that. I thought it was all about about video as well for gamers. But so you can also text chat just like you can here. This is what it sounds like when dogs cry. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I suppose I know the sound of crying doves. This week one of my this week my favorite dove died. Um he or she was ill and I'd been taking special care of it for uh, for a while. And um I managed to save it a couple of times. From, I also have two cats and, um, you know, the healthy dogs never get caught, but the sick ones sometimes do. And um, so I kept it safe and fed and um, I hoped it was going to live because this dove came inside, uh, came inside. It, when my windows were open, the dove would fly in and it would sit with me. It was really crazy. And even if I was in the garden, it would still come in. And it would just, you know, when I sat on a chair, the dove would come and sit there right with me. And it was also, we all, we always made the joke that, you know, perhaps he was a reincarnation of someone I used to know. But, um, yeah. But then this Saturday, I think it was, I found, yeah, Saturday morning, I found him and my cat was sitting on top of it. And I, 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 I looked and it was still alive and I, he... My cat hadn't even really heard it. He just sat on top of it. it my cat was looking at me like, what am I going to do? It doesn't even fight back. So I took it and I looked at it. It wasn't, it wasn't wounded, but it was very stressed, of course. But also I saw that it had become even weaker. And um, that was, um, I knew I took it and it didn't put up a fight anymore. And then I knew it, its time had come and I took it, brought it in with me. And um, I decided I want it, you know, there's two things you can do. No, three things. You can kill it yourself at that time to speed things up as a humane action. Well, I can't. I'm very sorry, but it's it's my nature. It's nature that the birds die, but it's my nature that I can't kill them. So then there is two op options. Either you give it back to the cat and you hope it will finish it off soon so it won't suffer for a long time. But I didn't find that a very worthy thing to do either um so i brought it in with me and um i held it for a while and it seemed to calm down and then um i gave it well i basically put it in a safe place calmly and quietly and um it passed away after a few hours so 
but it's sad because it was really, really nice dove. And he was also super stupid because he would fly in when the cats were in and the dog and, you know, in the last year and this summer and this spring, he was caught by the dog and the cats a couple of times and I had to save it. And I don't know, something was not really normal about the dog. <laughs> But still, he lived, a, he lived a long time, and uh, but now he's gone, and I really will miss it, so. The Rembrandt swatching videos have been very helpful when buying paints. A local shop here has sales throughout the year, so you gravitate towards Rembrandt a lot. Good. Yeah, good. And, and that's absolutely, I use, um, right now, you know, I composed a new, um, recently, I composed an ideal set of watercolors. And the morning after I did the live video here, I saw the color chart and I realized something was not right. So I made a new ideal set and there is a lot of Rembrandt in here. And there is um, Daniel Smith in here too. And um, a few core colors and a few Schminky Horadam and Sennelier, also just a few, but most, most is Rembrandt and I, I really, really love many of their colors and because I compared them to all the other brands that I had. And they were actually, you know, this is the first brand I ever tried because I am from the Netherlands. So this is what we have here, Van Gogh and Rembrandt. And the Van Gogh student grade paint is absolutely to die for. Um, for its price, it's, it's the best student grade paint in the world. Um, so, um, but then I also tried the Rembrandt and I really, really love um, the colors. And I was surprised to find that once I started comparing the Rembrandt paints to all the other brands that I have, how much I really like the Rembrandt colors and how good they are. Um, so I, I've always meant to make another video about that, but it's been a little bit hectic here. I haven't had a lot of time and it takes some preparation to do that, but I will make another video about that because um, I think the brand really deserves a shout out. I'm not affiliated to them, so this is not me, you know, trying to sell anything, but they are really, really very good. So, yeah, it's definitely, if, if Rembrandt is, is available to you, that's a really, really good choice. Oh, yeah, you saw the Instagram post about it. Yeah, a sparrow, a sparrow. Uh, what's a sparrow again? Is that a silly question in Dutch? What's the sparrow again? Yeah, the dove absolutely lacked self-preservation instinct. That's at, we actually thought that maybe it was like, you know, there are children with Down syndrome, human children. And we actually said to each other a couple of times, this must be a dove with Down syndrome. He's, he's just, he was too, too, um, he was too good of faith somehow. No, a sparrow is a starling, Ellie. A sparrow, um, what is it again? I don't know. Can you look it up? <laughs> I can't look it up now because I've got both my phone and my tablet working. <laughs> I can't go to Google Translate. I don't know what a sparrow is anymore. Oh God, I have to do a review of my bird names, my English bird name knowledge. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to go in now with PY42. Um, and what I'm going to do is just do a wash over these colors to tie them together a bit. A sparrow. I think it's a mousse. Yes, a mousse. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, that's just so. So you raised a sparrow. Oh, they're so tiny. <laughs> that must be nice. You know, it's kind of, I'm, I'm not really hoping this, but in a way I've always um, hoped that one day a young Jack doll would be left alone, would be left by his parents would be abandoned by his parents in my garden so that I could raise it <laughs> and it, ne it never happened and I, I honestly sort of don't hope it ever will happen but if it does happen I will definitely 
um, you know, pick it up and um, raise it as my own. Because here in the Netherlands, you can't. You can't raise a jackdaw or um, a crow um, or um, ravens, such birds, because they're all protected. And it's a very good thing, too, because they are incredibly dominant. So if you have a bird like that in your home, it's not really a good idea, per se. But they are so... I love their intelligence and I love the way they 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 act. Okay, well, going back in with a little bit of this color. I'm trying to paint the faded version of this, right? So, um, no, hold on. I'm going to use my, I don't like the, the lack of control I have. Um, so I'm trying to paint the faded, fading version of the, the angle shades. So there's not even going to be too much color in this. Um, I'm looking at the, the, the folds in the wing here to see where I should shade. Um, Roughly, you know, it's just roughly. This is not a very realistic painting, and yet you want it to, you want people to be able to see, oh, but that's that's a, an angle shape, or based on an angle shape. So what's all these things? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Imagination, basically. Oh, it fell from somewhere. You never have pets. There's no wildlife shelter, but you raised him well, and now he hangs with the flock. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's the tough thing about raising birds, right? When you let, when you set them free, you never know whether they're going to come back. Yeah. I saw today that people that they are looking for volunteers at the local animal shelter so I was thinking am I going to do that because I would love to I love working with animals but the, the thing is <laughs> I have a, a very um, soft heart for animals in the first place so um, if I see a sick animal come in I will I might not ha sleep much at night worrying about about the creature and also you know, when, when there is this really beautiful or a really nice dog or cat there, I might um, not be able not to bring it home when nobody wants it. And the thing is, we already have two cats and a dog and, you know, it costs a lot of money and it's practically, it's not very practical to own two or more dogs. We have one big dog already. Um, so I'm deliberating if I should do this. Because I will probably be one of those. I will probably end up a single old lady because my husband is going to say it's either me or the cats and then he is going to have to move. And then I'm probably going to end up a single old lady somewhere um, with more cats than she can handle. <laughs> so I might not, better not do that. <laughs> but still, on the other hand, I really, you know... During the COVID period, so many people took animals into their homes. And now they're slowly beginning to discard them again. And then they find out that, you know, as long as they're home from work, which they work, because in the Netherlands you couldn't go to the office for a long time. So then they wanted to have an animal. And then they have a pet. And then you know, as life returns to normal, they begin to feel that, you know, maybe a pet isn't that compatible with their lives. And then they discard the animals again, which is so, so sad because then these animals end up in a, in a very long cycle of, you know, usually of rejection. And that's... Uh, 
That's horrible. We have one. We have two cats from the shelter. One was um, discarded by his um, family when um, they got a baby. They no longer wanted to take care of the cat anymore. And he is a cuddly cat. Basically, he's a shawl. He lives around your neck. So um, he is like, I can't have him here in the studio because if he's here in the studio, he's definitely going to lie right on top of my work because that's where he likes to be most of all. And then we have another cat and she was um, a street cat. Um, we got her when she was um, not even two years old. No, she was, no, she was just one over a year old. Um, <coughs> she lived with people. Um, and they, um, they let her become pregnant. And when she was pregnant, they kicked her in the street and she was already pregnant when she was not, when she was about eight months old. So she got her, um, she got her, um, kittens in the street and she had to raise them and keep them safe in the street. So she's got a street mentality. You know, if you give both cats food, one cat will leave your fingers alone. The other one will eat your fingers first and then the food. So, um, but she had a lot of trust issues in the beginning and right now she's, what's really beautiful is that we gained her trust and now she is a very relaxed and trusting, um, cat, which is, which is just awesome. Oh, your break is over. Oh, bye bye paint and hiding. <laughs> Have a nice day. You too. I hope you hear it and maybe you hear it later when you look back if you do. Yeah. It's just a little color. Next time I'll pick I'll pick an animal that has more color in there. Because now it's just trying to go over it with very, very light layers. I'm going to... I want to have some fire in that eye. That's very dark. This dark color was, by the way, Daniel Smith Permanent Brown. Oh, I love that color. The Permanent Brown is, um, by the way, a fantastic paint. And I'm, this is something I'm telling you because you're here live. But if you want to make, um, you know, a, a light, fast version of Alizarin Crimson, then I think you should start playing around with Permanent Brown. Because um, I found a really beautiful mix. I don't know by heart what the other color was that I pulled it off with. But uh, I did pull it off. So, Because for my perfect palette I was looking for an Elizabeth, a, a waterproof, a, a light fast story, Elizabeth Crimson. Something that doesn't exist. So I'm, I did my own mix and it's gorgeous. Mm, how am I going to solve this, by the way? Cause... Mm. Painted a little bit much here. Well, what am I going to do with that? I think I'm going to... The birds that you hear right now are sparrows, by the way. Yeah. 
yeah, let's make the eye permanent brown. That looks kind of good. Because I feel this is such a, a bleak animal. But, you know, that's the whole point. This is the animal that already lost its color. So, hmm, maybe I should make some damage to the wings as well to make it look worse. <laughs> But to put in some drama. Hello, Katarina. The usual permanents are quinacridones. Not much like, no, they're not like true lizard at all. No. Nope. And unfortunately, I found that in the reds, there is only very few colors are really, really light fast. Um, right now on um, the window of my home, of my living room, there are a few colors attached that I tried to, I, I stuck them to the window this summer um, to see how light fast they are. And they, they all have to do with my attempts to find a perfect alizarin crimson replacement. So um, I'm really, really curious how they turn out because I really wanted to have a light fast deep um deep red a cooler version of it too and even though the permanent brown isn't a cool color still um mixing it with the with the right color does um make you go a long way getting close so But also what I found out is that there are so many um, red colors that uh, manufacturers say are um, permanent that are not permanent. And that's frustrating because um, I'm going back in with the chromium green, Mikey. So let me show you why you need the chromium green. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, there are some manufacturers out there who are not fully honest about their um, light fastness. And I'm not sure if they do it on purpose or that they have different tests, but when you try out those paints yourself, um, they end up not being light fast at all. So, and if you want to do commissions, for instance, or you want to sell your originals, then you really want to make sure your paint is light fast. So I'm using a little bit of chromium oxide mixed in here because it's it's a cooler green and it produces better shading. And I want to have a little bit of shade here. It's really lovely. The wind is blowing so hard. I love a good storm. Yeah, real alizarin crimson has got a, yeah, it's a cool red and yet it's it's got a warmth and earthiness in it. I, yeah, I can relate to that. Yeah, well, it is absolutely i really like the chromium green because it it just um well uh, no no did i just say i like chromium green oh my god something has really changed well it's a helpful color it mixes too you know if you if you have chromium green and if you have an hour or two for yourself then sit down with all your paints and the chromium green and make a mixing chart with all the colors you have 
and also you know to do it like um from 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 dark to light you know tonal values the it's gonna probably it might surprise you how useful the color is it surprised me a lot but it took me a little um it took a little um uh, convic no, what, how do you say that? They had to talk to me about that for a long time before I believed that. <laughs> it's just not really, um, it's not a pretty color. But there are more colors like that. There is another color, Venetian and English red, I really don't like either. Um, but... I don't have one. I don't have. Um, I don't have it in my set. <laughs> I refuse. I refuse to have that in my set. I think I'm going to leave the green alone, and I'm deliberating what I'm going to do with the legs. Are you using Windsor and Newton? No, um, Katerina. I am using um, a set that I composed a little while ago. It's an ideal set for me. Um, I reviewed many watercolor paints, so. I have a super big collection and I have some full collections of brands. The brands I use here mostly is Rembrandt by Talents, a Dutch brand. And um, there is some Daniel Smith in here, Sennelier and Core, and a couple of Schminke Hordem. Um, there is no Windsor, there's one Windsor and Newton color in here because it's a unique pigment. It's the Aqua Green, the Windsor and Newton 697, which I like very, very much. Uh, and I find it very useful for um, for for my paintings and, and mixes as well. But I don't have I I oh by the way I do have some. Hold on, I'm going to show you some Windsor Newton. So this is my Windsor and Newton collection, and but it's old. These are all no not hardly any of these. Um, let me see if it can. Yeah, this way you get to see everything, right? Um, no. <laughs> um, but it's old, and hardly any of these colors are still available anymore. So um, I hardly use them. Because I'm, I don't know, I, I feel they're too precious to use. <laughs> Maybe that's what I, that's the thing about them. So, um but they're interesting and some of these colors I don't know what pigments are in there um, the 70 set tests of pigments as a measure of their light fast and not real paint yeah there is something um, handprint says a lot about that uh, Bruce McAvoy and um, there is this site, Artist Creation, that's also a really good site about pigments and Kimberly Crick. She gets into it um, rather deeply as well. Um, and yeah, the light fastness thing is a thing. There is a lot of colors that are not really the light fastness they promise. So um, yeah, it's something I find a little bit hard, but especially with the reds since reds are so important in in any painting they're so dominant you want them to be light fast so yeah i wish they would i wish that manufacturers would think of a way to um do something about that or that there would be an independent uh, measure of light fastness that every manufacturer had to um, comply with that would also be really nice Um, yeah, it is not regulated. That surprised the hell out of me as well. I mean, when you're talking about like an alizarin crimson use are all manufacturers say the light fastness, light fast, um, uh, variant of real alizarin, alizarin crimson, but that's not true. All the pigments they use for those are not very light fast either. And um, there is very little, um, it's very hard to say up front which brands are. And some brands, they say, well, this pigment is not light fast, but we managed to create a light fast um, paint of it. Um, yeah, 
So I got to see for myself. I have to see it with my own eyes. And da -da -da -da, let me see. ASTM ratings are rather iffy at best. Yeah. And the ASTM ratings, I think, also have to do with um, um, what paints and what surfaces the paint was um, tested on. Um, because sometimes, um, you know, a pigment can be really good in acrylic or oil paints and really poor in watercolor paints or vice versa. So... The opacity, you don't know no, exactly, Mikey. I th I love transparent colors. I love the layering, and I I I hate muddiness, and um yeah, you're right about that. I really I I, I do have a lot of gouache as well, but when I paint with gouache, I'm I'm after a different um thing. You can put a label or whatever you want. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. There are also examples of the opposite. Sometimes, core with the PV23, PV, that's uh, the uh, diox dioxazine, right? Is that light fast? Because I, I don't have it in my set now because I couldn't find a light fast, um, um, I couldn't find a light fast version of that. I want to have that in my set, but I can't, I need to have that one light fast because I use it in mixes a lot. Core Golden, I have to say, um, I love the people from Golden. Um, I had, um, they sent me some paints to test um, years ago and I had this contact there. He was a really, really nice guy, um, you know, who really was interested in what I had to say about the paint. It was not like, there were not, there are so many um, paint manufacturers who now try to push YouTubers to sell the paints for them. So you get to review them and then they want to do affiliations with you. So they're only interested in selling. But Golden uh, uh, Core was now Golden. The company was really interested in what I had to say about the paint, how I experienced it. And that was really, really lovely. And we ended up... Um, I ended up identifying a problem one of their paints so um and that was so the way they talked to me about that was just so nice and open and so i don't know it was like a really good relationship in that sense whereas many manufacturers are well talent's manufacturer is is great to me at least um we we've been in touch about a couple of things they were really good too Windsor and Newton have been absolutely fantastic as well because I, the pigments I just showed you, the big, big box of old pigments, they helped me identify all of them based on the on the wrappings around them. And they also helped me identify all of the pigments in them. And the, we didn't pull it off for some colors because they were too old, but they really went a long way to help me get it all sorted out. So that was really lovely. Um, the Schminky company is not has not been very um, open. I think um, they were a little bit hard to get in touch with. Um, Roman Schmall, the Aquarius guy, has got really fantastic paints. By the way, um, the only problem for me is they don't come in tubes, and I want tubes because I do refills of my pens. So, and also he only his paint only comes in big pens, whereas I need one box with a lot of paints. So I do half pens and refills. Um, but he's a really great guy too, talking about the paints. Um, are there any others? Sennelier has been absolutely unreachable. I've reached out to them a couple of times about their paints for some information that I wanted to share with my, um, with my viewers. They did not reply me at all. <laughs> they ghosted me. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what they're... Why, why they did that but um yeah i speak french so my my emails were even in french too so um it's not like they can say they didn't speak english unfortunately because i would have loved to talk to sennelier about a thing or two because i love their paints as well and also their um their gouache is really their gouache is really really nice 
Very, very hard to get, but really, really nice. Core. By the way, there is um, a couple of core colors in here. The Pearl Orange, PO71. And the other core uh, color I have in here, oh, there's another uh, Viridian, PG18. It's also really great by Core. And the best color that Core has is Cobalt Blue, PB28. If you ever need a cobalt blue, I mean, it's expensive anyway, so why not spend a few extra dollars? Over here, Core is super, super expensive, but that's the most beautiful cobalt ever because it is granulating, but also because of the aquasol that's in it, um, the, the color just rushes over your paper and it leaves behind such a beautiful, tender kind of blue. It's, it's, I love it. It's my favorite blue color at the moment. Oh, sorry, I'm talking really much right now. I need to paint as well. <laughs> oh, God. Right. Uh, uh, it's light, fast, court tested it, posted the result on the blog. Just think. Yeah, the, the PV23. Okay, you might have forgotten me, but I told you when you swatched your perfect palette. Did you, Paolo? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, no, it's true. I forget things like that because... The live videos are very intense to make sometimes because I paint or swatch and I talk at the same time. So sometimes it's hard for me to remember. Sorry, it's nothing personal. It's really just when I switch it off, I'm sort of like the energy's gone. <laughs> so my, my memory gets deleted. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, so it is okay. I will look into that because I am I am about to order another um, tube of the cobalt blue. Because I really don't want to run out of that one, so I might I might just also order um, the PV twenty three then. Because I don't think yeah I do have the PV twenty three. I have the high chromium set by um, Golden Core, the five milliliter tubes. So I actually do have it. Oh, I'm gonna go through my 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 swatching um, set again that I made for the perfect palette. I think this is about all that I can do about this one because these colors are maybe I'm gonna go maybe I should go back in with some of this let's give it a try don't know if that's gonna be nice my key you're going to get to sleep. Yes. <laughs> Good night, Mikey. <laughs> it was a rather long stream. Mm -hmm. Is it? I don't, I have no idea. Oh, I think I'm, I'm already in one half hour. Uh, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to leave too in a minute. I'm just going to do some final touches here and then I'm going to go as well. That's the thing with going live. Um, I always go like it always ends up being a much longer video than I'd anticipated. I talk too much. So I'm just going to put in a, a few accents here and there. Not too many, just a couple. Okay, so now I want some more of this color here. No, I won't forget to feed the dogs. I can't forget. They're still sitting there looking at me reproachfully. They're hating me seriously right now. If you don't see me back online in a couple of weeks, they eat, they ate me. So you should warn the police. Dutch lady got eaten by her dogs. It's not even my dogs. <laughs> okay. 
Hmm, I need a, I need a few more things here. I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of indigo. Yeah, the gray is graphite. No, no, no. It's it's a graphite. Absolutely. Yeah. But I gave it a good wash before painting it, so it doesn't dissolve when you paint over that, when you do that. But that gives some... Um, I'm, I'm looking at the screen myself now on my tablet, and I can see that um, there is enough shading in there. So I'm going to do a little bit of a stronger color accent here. See how that works out. Okay, now there is a little bit, another of this indigo I'm going to use to put in the eye. <laughs> Can you hear the does? Wow! Hooray! Beep me! <laughs> Okay, and I need a little bit of PY150 Nickel Ace and Yellow. And I'm going to put that in the eye here to create that sense of fire in the eyes. <clears throat> <laughs> the doves aren't done yet so this is what it sounds like when the doves cry absolutely <laughs> okay, Katerina. Well, you're welcome. It's no problem. You can always you can always ask. Um, gonna go over this again with a light wash, just to warm it up and give it a little more. And then I think I need to go in with some black and white. Um, touches and then I'm gonna leave it be okay so going in with some black I'm gonna use PBK6 ivory no lamp gray lamp 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 black ivory black no lamp There's so much graphite on the paper here that um, 
watercolor has a bit of trouble permeating the, the graphite. Okay, I think that's good. There's one thing I see I need to do here. The tongue. This needs to stand out. Oops, that stands out a bit. Watch. You know what? I'm just going to go in all the way. It's my sign to leave, guys. I can hear somebody rumbling behind the door of my studio, so I think it's coffee time. So I'm going to leave you for now. And um, I uh, think I'm going to try it a couple of other times to, to see, you know, if... If I like making the morning lives and uh, if I've got an idea of what, what I'm gonna do so if you like it then um, you can you know keep an eye on my on my channel and um, I will try to announce it although I will only know you know very um, short before I do the lives I mean I I only know right before I um, right before I go online say half an hour in advance or so because I don't really plan it and um, I just try to see what fits into my schedule that day so but if you like it then you can maybe subscribe to my channel and um, I will give a small notice up front to let you guys know and uh yeah need to do the antenna i think that's it for now Maybe something will change. Maybe later you will see one of these photos um, on Instagram and you might see, might see some changes um, are still made. But this is it for now. So thank you very much for being here and I'm looking forward to meeting you guys again. Have a really good day. Bye bye.